You got this Tando siding on your house? Now this guy does. And right there's a window. And under that window, it rot the sheathing rotted out because the window leaked. And you can't see it from here, but the water went in here and all that wood underneath of there is rotted out. Now this isn't like standard siding. So, you want to get this piece off to repair it. There's a secret that you don't know and you may not want to know, but stay tuned because it's coming up. I think you can agree that this Tando Stone siding looks absolutely amazing, but looks aren't everything. This product appears as though it installs much like traditional double four siding in the sense that it uses a starter strip at the bottom and J channel around the doors and windows. But this starter strip is a bit different. Can you see why? Sure, it nails on the same, but notice how the bottom of the starter strip is flush with the bottom of the wall. This installer didn't leave any space under the strip to clip the siding onto it, like with traditional siding technologies. See how he's clipped that on and he's pulling up on it to lock it onto the starter strip? It doesn't work that way with the Tando siding. In fact, if you see, he's snapping it down onto the starter strip. And he's leaving a two and a half inch gap on the left hand side. What's important to note here is that he's nailing it in the nailing flange at the top. And there's also a small nailing flange for one single nail on the right hand side. Right there, that's the one. Then the next piece goes on, snaps down on top of the starter strip, slides left into the previous panel, not only hiding that nail off to the right hand side, but also snapping into place. Well, this is great. This makes your siding so super strong. But what if you gotta take it off because something happened behind it and you need to repair something. So, in order to get the piece off way down there, you gotta take this whole row off. But in order to get this row off, you gotta take this corner cap off. look up here there's one finishing nail right there it's holding that on we're going to take that out and see what happens now i want to be very clear here because yours may not have a finishing nail there's a nailing flange as part of that corner system and if things worked out on your home during the installation where that nailing flange is still there it could be covered by that ledge you see above it or additional siding, a deck, a ledger or something could be over that and hiding it. And if you have that trouble where you're not able to get to that nailing flange, I have some suggestions that might help you out. Now each one of these is held in with a roofing nail. I want to take a minute to point out this pin right here. This pin fits up into the hole on the corresponding piece that sits on top of it. So in order to take these apart after you get either the nailing flange released or your finishing nail out or whatever's holding it there, you have to be able to lift it up at least an inch off of the other piece. 
This really should go without saying, but if you break that tab off trying to get the nail out, you're not going to be able to reattach this. You're going to have to drill another hole or, or do something, and there's not a whole lot of room in there for error. So this flat bar I got at Home Depot, this is what I carry in my bag because it's very helpful all the time, and I suggest something very thin like this to try to just get behind the nail and pry it away enough to maybe get a set of these on there. These are nail pullers and they work really well to remove nails without damaging what you're working on. This is where the separation is and as you can see you can't get them apart because they lock into each other if I take this panel off I could take them all the way off to the bottom and probably go under the window but once I get over there I'll be locked into all of them so all of them will have to come off as well <laughs> If you're thinking about putting tando siding on your house, don't. You can't fix anything if it goes wrong. You gotta take it all off and reside your whole damn house. This is ludicrous. What company would design something that you can't even take apart and fix? Doesn't make any sense to me. Tando, shame tando, on you. Shame tando, shame on you. Your product is your garbage, product garbage, 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 garbage. So I was always told growing up, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. But that isn't entirely true because life isn't black and white. And this Tando siding, it has its good points and it has its not so good points. So the good point about this siding is it appears to be very durable. It seems like it's very rigid, doesn't look like it was made out of cheap product that, you know, are easily going to crack or anything. It really does appear to. Uh, withstand weather, bushes rubbing up against it for years, and it maintains its color, its rigidity, and it really hangs nice on this home. The problem I have with the siding is how they connect it to the next piece. It's stackable siding, but regular siding when the next piece goes on it overlaps the the lower piece on the outside of the unit so in other words and i'll see if i can find a clip to show here the siding clips onto the next piece the, the previous piece of siding and this does as well but it does it in a different fashion this one snaps down over the nailing flange it locks in the nailing flange very well. It makes it very, very secure. But it also blocks access to it. With regular siding, you could take it apart in the middle and you can take the nails out of a piece of siding, replace it, and using a special tool, you can lock the loose siding back onto the new piece. With Tando siding, it's not that cut and dry. So here's the deal, this Tando siding that looks like stone has a ledge above it, then J-channel, right here where you see this line, and then it has cedar-shaped Tando siding on top. So the ledge is covering the nailing flange of the stone, the J-channel and the cedar shakes are covering the nailing flange of the ledge and then the next row of cedar shakes are covering the nailing flange of the one below it. So if you really wanted to take this off properly by removing the nails, you literally have to take every bit of siding off from the peak of your house all the way to the ground, leaving nothing left in order to get to the part that you want. You might get to keep one piece of the siding on, the bottom left piece, the very first piece. Everything else would have to come off. 
That is absolutely ridiculous. That's unacceptable. All right, I'm sure you're like me in the sense that I look at these pictures. There's 10 of them here I'm going to show you. They look wonderful. These homes look great. You don't have to paint them. They're zero maintenance, and they look great. But when you have a problem behind it, and you need to do something to the sheathing or whatever, you don't have access to it. You've got to literally unside the whole side of your house in order to get to it. And that comes straight from the manufacturer. So I'm not crazy about that. I want you to leave a comment down below telling me what you think about this product and whether you would use it on your home knowing you can't get behind it. Now with that said, I do have what I think is a workaround for this. And the customer wanted me to talk to the manufacturer first, which I did. They confirmed, you got to remove it all. So I come up with a workaround. The customer's rescheduled with me. And within the next three or four weeks, I'm going to be going over there and trying it. Let's take a look at the upcoming videos. If you want to see how it turns out, subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell icon so you're notified when I upload it. And you'll see the conclusion of what the turnout is. Thanks for watching the video. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this product. Let me know if you agree with me that you wouldn't put it on your home or would you? And if you're flipping your house, this isn't the cheapest way to do it. So I would definitely stay away from it if you're flipping something because it's like twice the cost of the regular site.